wunderschönen guten Tag. Hi, my name is Matthias Rillich and today I'll talk about rate of change in ecology. Now I think most of us can relate to the rate of change because of everyday experience. Imagine for example, you it's a hot summer day and you want to go into the water, the lake water, the river water. Well, there's two ways you can do it. You can very slowly get in, get gradually lose, used to the cold water, and then eventually after a period of time, you are immersed in the water. And the other way to do it is to, you know, jump right in. And as you jump right in, of course, you will feel this immediate shock of immersion into the much, much colder lake water. And it'll come to you as a, as a brief shock, whereas that shock was sort of much, much milder as you step by step sort of um, went into the water. And so um, this rate of change is also important in ecology because very many factors in ecology and global change, for example, change very, very gradually. For example, CO2 concentration in the atmosphere goes up very gradually or temperature goes up very gradually or even um, eutrophication with, for example, nitrogen by atmospheric deposition that changes very gradually or the arrival of microplastic from also atmospheric deposition will gradually increase. Um, but the reality of how we study things in ecology is different because we typically, if you want to study warming, we just switch on the higher temperature in a bunch of um, incubators. Or if you want to study the effects of elevated CO2, well, we just switch on the elevated CO2 in some chambers. If you want to study the effects of microplastic, we just mix microplastic in the soil. And so these experiments are sort of sudden on or rather abrupt experiments. When in reality, the fact that they want to study happens to very often be one that only very gradually increases. And so now we've um, recently looked at this in the literature. This is a study, a review paper on systematic mapping that's been led by Liliana Pinek and India Mansur with contributions from um, Milica Lakovic and uh, Masahiro Rio, which is a French, USA, Serbian, Japanese, German collaboration, sort of typical of our lab. And um, what have they found? So first of all, most of these studies have been done at the level of the individual, say the individual fish or the individual plant. And comparatively, much, much less work has been done at the higher levels of the ecological hierarchy, in particular at the level of the community or at the ecosystem level, studying ecosystem process rates. So that's one clear pattern. Uh, we know relatively little about um, these responses to different rates of change when you move up the level of the ecological hierarchy. To some extent, that is sort of understandable because um, often these studies are much more logistically involved than studying individual um, organisms. So it's in a way understandable. The second point that came out of this analysis is that um, there was a very clear preference for studying certain, certain factors in this respect with rate of change. And in particular, the fact that I was studied most was temperature. Of course, temperature is an important state variable. It's connected to um, global warming, so to global, global change and climate change. So again, this um, makes sense that it would be one of the more studied variables. But it was at the expense of also studying other variables this way, which as I mentioned before, very many variables really in reality are gradually increasing parameters and um, they are not being studied this way. So this is a reason for concern. So what are some recommendations coming out of this study? Is the first one is um, really gradual and abrupt are just often very ill-defined. People mean different things by this the same words and there are various different study systems. So rather than calling something gradual versus abrupt, we just think of um, rates of change as a continuum and not single out uh, some categories that we would then call 
uh, for a particular system gradual and abrupt because it may differ from a, a different perspective. So the first recommendation is basically deal with rate of change as a continuum that it in reality also really is when you study the effects of um, um, the duration um, and temporal shape of some treatment. The second recommendation is really more fully report the parameters of the experimental design. So sometimes it was not clear how long, for example, that ramping was, and it was also sometimes not clear uh, how long then the system, once it had sort of ramped up, stayed at that, that plateau level. Uh, but it's, it's all, that's all important um, to know because that allows us to really um, compare the different studies that have been done on different organisms and, and different systems. So it's important that uh, uh, reporting on parameters um, really improves. At the individual level, um, there is a lot of work on phenotypic plasticity, like um, how organisms physiologically adjust to any given treatment, say exposure to salinity or microplastic or warming. And um, one of the conclusions of this paper is that the temporal dimension of this um, application of a treatment should really be included in the study of phenotypic plasticity as another axis. And finally, as this study had really identified a big gap in terms of studying rates of change in ecology, when you move up the levels of the ecological hierarchy, um, the last recommendation would be to focus really on these levels and also to include studies that transcend these levels from the individual to the population, to the community, and then to the ecosystem process level. Yeah, so overall, I think it's very important that we as ecologists, especially in global change biology, uh, pay closer attention to the rate of change because it also may uh, change the outcome of an experiment when you give organisms times to, time to adjust to the new condition, for example. And basically, in the end, it is important to include more and more aspects of the reality of the change in the way we design experiments. So for example, by mimicking this gradual change uh, in an experiment by means of gradually increasing the factor like temperature or elevated CO2, we get that one step closer to reality and that's worth it. Hi there. If you like this video, don't forget to click like down there and also remember to subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave comments. See ya!